Welcome back to the GTN show. Now, have you ever heard a triathlete say they just want to finish a race? Back up a minute there, Mark. What, no position, no time at all? Or have you ever heard a triathlete say, oh, I don't need a new bike, I don't want a new bike? You're, you really are pulling my leg now, Mark. This cannot be a triathlete that we are talking about. Well, exactly. Well, we're having a little bit of fun today. We're discussing things triathletes never say. Yeah, and aside from that, we do have news of how one of the world's most talked about Ironman athletes right now stacked up against a world-class ITU field, plus the staggering feat of a marathon being completed in every single recognized country in the world since only the start of last year. got plenty bikes and gear. Said no triathlete ever. Let's be honest, we always want new bikes and more gear. And as triathletes, we do have a bit of a habit of wanting the latest and greatest kit. Oh, $600 for a triathlon entry? What an absolute steal. Fraser, you know they've got a great deal going on for that triathlon at the moment. Oh. Hmm, now there is no beating around the bush on this one because let's face it, some race entry prices are fairly ludicrous and no matter what your financial situation is, most people gulp a little bit when they have to hit that purchase now button. So I got out of the swim in a really good position and then I sat on this guy's wheel for the whole of the first lap and he told me all the way around. Wait, I, I, hang on, wasn't it non-drafting? Yeah it was, but I went on to win the race. Well, this is a touchy subject. We know people draft, we don't condone it, but I don't think I've ever heard anyone actually admitting to doing so, despite plenty of people seeing them do it. Don't draft, folks. Going to the loo on race morning? I never need to find a toilet before the start. Do you? Now, correct us if we're wrong here, but race morning seems to have an odd effect on our bowel movements. It's as if our body just knows it needs to go. Now, no matter what the type of race, if I haven't been at least three times before race start, I'm thinking something's wrong. Headwinds. I love headwinds. They're my favourite type of riding. Literally said nobody. Now you don't even need to be a triathlete to hate headwinds, but if you are someone that does, then do let us know in the comment section below because you will make a very interesting and probably very rare case study for us. Good weekend? Yeah, uh, literally just rode my bike actually. Oh yeah, what sort of session did you do? No, 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 I literally just rode my bike. I stopped off a few times, but that was it. Sorry, wait a minute. So no power, no average heart rate. What about your time? No, I mean, I literally just rode my bike and just had fun. That was it. What? No Strava? No, that doesn't sound very right. I mean, triathletes love data and the concept of just heading out for a ride really doesn't work in the world of triathlon. We need to have a purpose. We need to be able to analyze our metrics as we're riding. We need to be able to upload them afterwards so we can look into them to the nth degree. I mean, just going for a ride. Spare time. Mate, I have got so much of it, quite literally, do not know what to do with my time. Three sports, a job, maybe even a family, spare time is not something triathletes talk about very often. In fact, I'd almost say it's non-existent. Well, honestly, mate, it was an amazing performance. I am never gonna go faster than that. In actual fact, I may as well just hang up my goggles now. I am never going to better that performance. No, 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 I, I'm, I'm not having it. It's just not something that ever happens. I mean, I don't think I've ever met somebody who is 100% satisfied with their performance. Races are a bit like, and I'm no surfer, a perfect wave. We always think we can do a little bit better and there's always something in a race that we think we can improve upon. Yeah, I mean, I literally just want to finish. Ha, yeah, this might be the case for some beginners, but more often than not, we've always got an aim in the back of our minds, whether we admit to them or not. But what about your race this weekend? Yeah, I wanna win. Well, that was fun, but now on to our triathlon news. And actually starting with a bit of race news, because we actually had a notable pro 
from long distance racing, racing in the ITU World Cup in Santa Domingo. Yeah, now on the men's side of racing in particular, there were some very notable results got thrown up. In particular, the winner, Matthew McRoy from the US, won his third consecutive World Cup race, which is very impressive indeed. The Americans themselves took a clean sweep of the podium, so first, second, and third places. And fourth, fifth, and sixth positions were all taken, or occupied, should I say, by Swiss athletes. But the big news from this race was Cam Worth's debut to ITU Racing. Now, we absolutely love Cam here on the channel, his attitude, and he was very cool and confident going into this race, but I think he may have got a little bit of a reality check from this. Now, we have actually been saying for a long time that IT racing is impressive. It is fast, it is furious. It's not very easy for someone from long distance racing just to pop into IT racing. The swim is incredibly fast. The biking is incredibly fast, despite what people think. And the running is also, obviously, incredibly fast. Yeah, so I would say it's safe to say that Cam may be bit off a little bit more than he could chew. So what do we mean by that? Well, he came out of the water some two and a half or so minutes in arrears. He then proceeded to lose more time on the bike despite how strong a bike rider he is. And then he ran around about a 36 minute 10K, which to put it into perspective was six minutes or so slower than the 30 minute something 10K that the winner Matthew McElroy ran. So, Putting our crystal ball on the table, needless to say, we don't think that Cameron is going to be adorning the green and gold of the Australian tri-suit at the Olympic Games next year in Tokyo. But what a champ for giving a, a go. And he really was quite humble in his sort of after race social media posts and was certainly very respectful of the other athletes in the race too. Yeah, and you, we should point out actually that the guy basically went solo throughout the bike. And for most athletes to end up in that situation after swim, they'll get lapped mm. out. But he actually managed to hold that off. He lost three minutes, but obviously to a pack of riders. So still an incredible performance, but probably not quite what he's after. Meanwhile though, on the women's side, that was also rather eventful because we had Taylor Nib coming into the finish line. It looked like it was all sewn up for her. And I think for those athletes following behind, thought Taylor Nibs got the win here, only for her to dive into the penalty tent 100 meters ago, she obviously had a penalty to serve, and then that left it open for Andrea Hewitt to go on to take the win. Unexpected for her, but also quite an emotional and quite a special day for her because it's actually four years mm. to the day since her partner, Laurent Vidal, passed away. So that was really nice to see. Um, Taylor Nib actually went on to take second place and then it was Claudia Rivas took third. A couple of weeks ago now, professional triathlete Kirsty Smith crossed the line at Ironman 70.3 Waco in 14th place, which she was rather happy with until she was disqualified for carrying her pet corgi across the finish line. Yeah, now this is forbidden. It's against the rules. Essentially, anyone that isn't an athlete, so friends, family, spectators, they're not allowed to be in that finishing shoot. Now, although the regulations don't explicitly say that animals are included in that list, it goes without saying that if you're not an athlete or race organizers or staff in general, you're not meant to be in that finishing area. And that really is just to look after everybody's safety. Yeah, I think it's probably the first time this rule has been yeah, tested in that way with from, from anything we can remember. Yeah, uh, but we're interested to hear what you guys think. Do you think that an athlete should be disqualified from an Ironman race or any race for that matter for anything other than themselves going across the finish line? So with a friend, a family, a child, a pet, whatever it is, simple yes or no. And you can enter that by clicking just up there. Right, now we're going to move on to a story about marathons, and in particular about a marathon being completed in every single country. Now, to be specific here, Nick Butter started off with the mission of doing a marathon in every single one of the United Nations recognised countries. Now, there are 196 of them. So last January, uh, 6th of January 2018 to be specific, he decided to start that mission and he just completed it this Sunday with the Athens Classic Marathon. Yeah, 196 marathons. I can't wrap my head around it. Uh, in doing so, he raised a staggering amount of money, all for charity for Prostate Cancer UK 
over £65,000, which is a brilliant effort. Mm. Um, now, all of this is actually inspired by a chap called Kevin Weber, who Nick actually describes as having had a huge impact on him and his own life. Now, Weber was actually diagnosed with prostate cancer back in 2014, has done a whole host of endurance events since, and actually, join Nick in his final marathon in Athens. Which is a great story. And I was so blown away by this and my math isn't very good. So I got the calculator out. Now I make it just under nine marathons a month for those 22 months since they started or since Nick rather started last January. So absolutely hats off to you, Nick. Fantastic achievement. Now then, if you're anything like us, you will most likely have a collection of swim hats and goggles at home. I've got a lot up in my loft. Now we have come across a company very local to us, in fact, that is looking to recycle those to create some goggles and a very special swim hat. I don't know what that very special swim hat means, but I'm quite excited by it. Now, if you do have some, you can send them to the address on screen right now. In return, you will get 10% off a purchase on their website. So yeah, very nice. Very get stuck nice. in. Cool. Yeah, now moving on to something a little bit different, but given our, well, rather exciting summer of doing X Dry events, we thought that you might just like to know that right now, or just happened rather, has been the ballot for the Norseman Try, which is kind of the, the king of all the X Try races, and it is such a popular event. The clamour to get involved in this race, as we now understand from a first hand, well, you definitely from a first hand point of view, is, it is enormous. Everybody wants to get a piece of Norseman, it seems. So there's over, well, in fact, thousands and thousands of applicants go into this ballot every year. So those 250 lucky names have just been announced. So if you're one of them, we thought you could let us know down there in the comments so we could, uh, well, find out if you're getting to go back to Norway. Or if you need some support, because we'd love to go. <laughs> Sorry to butt in for a moment, guys, but the last couple of shows I have talked about the Zwift Tri Academy. Well, it is actually up and running. So I'm just heading home and I need to go and actually try this first workout. So I'm going to give you a few updates as we go. We're going to be dropping bits into the shows and hopefully you guys can join along as I try and get fit. Okay, I have just completed, so I'm just doing the warm down, my very first Zwift Triathlon Academy workout. This was the strength workout, you can still hear my one down going on there. Um, it was one hour, 12 minutes with five sets of eight minutes at, well, below, well below FTP. And I must admit, I found it much more comfortable than I expected. I'm still fairly new on Zwift, but I've had a couple of um, breakthroughs today. I've got, um, unlocked some new shoes. So I've got some black shoes on Zwift and I've gone up a level as well. I have almost, I'm 45 seconds away from ticking off my very first one and I feel quite good about myself so hopefully I can have some more company next time there's been loads of people riding on Zwift but um, yeah I've uh, just had to entertain myself and enjoy just getting to grips with Zwift and um, getting the hang of this and there it is I have finished so I'm going to leave it there and um, hopefully I'll have a report back next week but it's time to go do some running I think next week and give um, the Zwift Tri Academy a full go so come join me and hopefully see you on the next workout Well now back to the GTN poll, because last week we asked you, will Lionel Sanders be back on the podium in Kona in 2020? Yeah, so clearly you guys are fans of Lionel, we knew that anyway. So 65% of you said, yeah, of course he will be, and 35% of you are still doubting whether he can get back on that podium in 2020. Yeah, and I really do hope he is, because he's a very exciting racer. And with his new coach, or going back to his old sure. coach, I should I say, um, well, I really hope that does happen for him. Yeah, now another thing that we want to flag up and remind you of is that our shop now has a rather exciting sale going already. It's already kicked off, Black Friday sale. There's loads of goodies in there that have got, well, great discounts. Everything from our cycling kit, our training kit, casuals as well. So get yourself involved, head over to the shop because apparently it is selling pretty quick. Right, now we're moving on to our race news section. And first up is Ironman 70.3 Zymen in China. Now, this race was notable because it was won by I2 athletes on both the male and the female side, both of them making their debut at the distance, which is quite interesting. Mm. And this is a little bit more um, common at the moment because again, I2 athletes are looking towards the end of next season, the 2020 year, when they're gonna have had their Olympic games out of the way, the I2 season will be out of the way, and the World 70.3 Championships next year 
in Lake Taupo are in November. So that gives athletes something to aim towards. So here in China at the Zymen race, on the men's side, we had Martin Van Riel from Belgium dominating the race in his first ever chance at this distance. We had second place going to Josh Amberger from Australia and third place was ex um, Ironman 70.3 world champion Tim Reed. So strong field. Yeah, well, over on the women's side, as you've mentioned already, it was a debut performance for our winner. It was Ashley Gentle, Josh Amberger's partner, in fact. So she took the win, actually pretty much going from gun to tape to take that win. Second place went to Leslie Smith, and then third place went to Frankie Senyana. Yeah, and then we had another race on another continent, and this was a first of so sorts as well, really, because this was Challenge Cape Town. First time there had been an event down there in South Africa, and there was a lot of uh, international national athletes as well, some top South Africans racing there too, partly because the challenge season is starting to wrap up, there's just one more race left, and the challenge series offers a very lucrative prize pool for the athletes to aim towards. If they get six races pooled together, including one Ironman distance, they can put themselves in the line for quite a sizable paycheck, and it seems like there's quite a few athletes trying to scramble some points to pick their rankings up. So, winner went to ex-ITU long distance world champion Pablo De Pina, second place went to Steve McKenna from from Australia and third was home favourite Matty Troutman from South Africa. Well over on the women's side it was Emma Powland that took the win. Second went to Anna Watkinson and third to Laura Sidow. Well now time to take a look through all your photos that you've sent in to us. And we've got a pain cave to kick off here, sent in by Maxim, and this is his S-Works Venge in what looks like his university halls room. Yeah, and he says that he's trying to handle his engineering studies and triathlon all in once, and I'm particularly tickled by what looks like a rocket ship about to take <laughs> off in the back. <laughs> Aside from the fact that he's got his uh, nice bike set up on the turbo. So yeah, yeah, he's got GTN on screen. Good man. Uh, Zwift off on his laptop to the side. Um, his Venge all set up. That's, yeah, good use of space there. Yeah, we, we, there's always a winner when we can see GTN on screen. Uh, moving on, we've got another one here from Belinda, and she says that this is from Falmouth in Cornwall, and apparently her university <laughs> lecturer brought in some Lego. We're big fans of Lego here, love it. Um, and she couldn't resist putting a little swim bike run scene together. <laughs> it's brilliant, it's really good. We always like something different yeah. here. Uh, next one from David, and this is from the Noosa Triathlon actually from a few weeks back. Um, and this is his transition setup, his Cervelo P2. He says he's Competing alongside 8,000 of his closest friends. Yeah, which I guess is reference to the fact that I'm pretty sure, and I said this last week's show, I'm pretty sure, and I should have double-checked, that it is the biggest race now in the world after London and Chicago used to be the biggest, so it's a big race. Yeah. Um, and then we've got another one here from Caleb, who has sent in a picture from Sunny Waco at the 70.3 there a couple of weeks ago. Now, he says that black socks in a dark transition area in the morning when he was setting up was a bad combo, and he's highlighted here what we think, but we're not entirely sure, is reading between the lines, some rather bloody heels. Yeah, it looks like he forgot or could not see those black socks, didn't put them in transition, and therefore didn't have them to put them on. Um, and yeah, I mean, it looks like, well, some very nice shoes, he's got some Nike 4% yeah. have shredded those heels. Now, I've done this once before. Mm. In fact, I think it was by one of my first 70.3s. I thought, I just want to go <laughs> socks to be super quick, as I've done for IT racing. It took me about, a month or two for my heels to recover. Oh, I can imagine, Mark. It's yeah. not as brutal. Yeah, I don't suggest it. Not brutal, though, is this very impressive picture of a brand new P5X and some new colorways there. What do you think of that one, Mark? That is, I really like this new colorway. Yeah. It is lovely. And he's got um, a decals on his wheels to match that yellow or that vibrant yellow on the on the front and also the bar tape, of course. So he's done a good job there. Um, this is from Anthony. It's, um, he says it's in Poland although looking at the signs in the background, that does not look No, like it's very writing. English looking signs, but either way, bike's stunning and... Super excited to ride it by the sound of things too. So by this point, I'm sure he's ridden it. So let us know how it was. Um, final picture is sent in by Julian um, and, or Julian, I'm not actually sure where he's from. Um, and he has received his Kona cask helmet that he won in our recent giveaway so um, yeah we saw them out there in Hawaii lovely bit of kit so hope you're gonna enjoy going fast with that one yeah he looks super pumped so yeah thanks ever so much to everyone for sending in your photos don't forget to keep sending your photos in using our photo uploader and on that note we are looking for submissions mm. for a video 
because we want to do the ultimate pain cave on Global Triathlon. Mm -hmm. So if you're quite proud of your pain uh -huh. cave, then send in photos to us. Now, ideally we are, and I'm afraid to say this, we are looking for pain caves in the United Kingdom for us to easily pop along to. But heck, if you've got a great pain cave in America or Poland or wherever it is, send them in. We just want to see them. We're now time for the GTN caption competition. Indeed, now every week we are inundated, well maybe not inundated, but yeah. we get a lot of caption submissions. So we've selected some again here. Now, first up is one that, well, we had quite a few along this line. <laughs> we did, but Jesus' knack of walking on water, and on that line we had one from Christian Knack, who said that if Jesus participated in triathlon. Yeah, right. very good. Uh, Miguel says, said, Focus. <laughs> Remember what Mr. Miyagi says. We did like that one, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. That What's one. that referencing to? Um, to Karate Kids. Yeah. I was trying to remember the name then. <laughs> yeah. um, but our winner for this week actually goes to one of our biggest fans, a very prolific commenter. Yeah. Uh, Savage Poet said, just testing my silo wetsuit, which we all really liked here. It's a a great caption. So well you are the winner of this week's GTN caption competition. This hat is on its way to you. Just get in touch, we'll send it out to you. But for this week's caption comp photo, we've actually got a photo from the IT World Cup in Santo Domingo um, and of a chap sat on the side of the road. Um, I must add, actually, if we zoom in, he he's has, got a, few, yeah, yeah, has got a few scrapes. So I don't want to take the mick out of him. Uh, I do feel very sorry for him. But if we just remove that from the situation here, and just focus on the fact that there's a guy sat in the middle of the road with his bike beside him. Probably wishing he hadn't done what he did to crash. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ping in your caption cup photos and have some fun, because it's a quite funny photo, really. Well, that's it for the GTN show this week. We've got loads of great videos coming up this week. We have Stepping Up to Ironman with Tim Reed, the former Ironman 70.3 world champion and obviously a very accomplished Ironman athlete. We have the perfect freestyle technique with Jazz Carling, the double Olympic medalist and Commonwealth champion. Sure is. And cyclocross for triathletes. Yeah, there's some great videos coming up. Looking forward to seeing all of those. And got to mention the shop again. We talked about it already, but there's a great sale in there, Black Friday sales. So get involved, have a look at all the great stuff that we've got in there. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, so please hit that thumb up like button, find the globe wherever it is on screen to make sure you get all the other content that we have here on the channel. And if you want to see a video that we've done about everything you need to know about freestyle breathing, well, you can find that here. Yeah, and if you'd like to find out a little bit more about using hills for your running training, then you can see that by clicking just down here.